So let's look at another example data set that you can use as practice for when you're doing your data set with your data. So you are going to have your car, whatever your car looks like, you're going to test it 10 times, 10 trials. You are going to uh, wind it up or use blow up your balloons or whatever it is that's powering your car and you're going to let it roll and you are going to time how long it takes for it to come to a complete stop and then you're going to measure in meters how far it goes and then right here these decimals that's uh, tenths of a meter so one decimeter or ten centimeters so this would mean five meters and forty centimeters forty not four but forty if I wrote five point four three that would mean forty three centimeters now you guys I want you to just pretty much measure to as close to um, the closest tenth which is uh, one decimal point for both your time and your distance and that will be fine and so then when you're calculating your speed uh, one decimal point should be enough but you guys noticed when we did our data set in class that some of those speeds ended up being the same uh, remember four, three, four, and seven I think were all 2.1 meters per second and so that's when you need to have some tiebreakers and that's when carrying it out to more decimal places can help you figure out exactly which one is the fastest, which one is the slowest, and then which one was the, the median, which means the middle. So first of all I'm going to go ahead and calculate these speeds and how I'm going to do that, speed is distance over time. So I'm going to take my distance divided by my time. So 5.4, I'm, I'm not actually worried about that 3, that was just an example, divided by 2.2, I get 2.45. So if I've got 2.45 and it repeats, it's 2.45454545445. Um, so I'm going to round it off to just one decimal place. So if it's 4, 5, I've got to round that 4 up to a 5. So that would be 2, excuse me, 2.5 meters per second. If you want to make sure that you're not going to have to worry about tiebreakers later, it might be a good idea to just go ahead and do 2.45 there. And then I'm going to do 6.9 divided by 2.8 and I get 2.46, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just put 2.46. It looks like having that there, that tells me that this one actually is a little faster than this one, so it might be a good idea to go ahead and carry it out a little bit more. Uh, let's do the third one, 10.2 divided by 4.5, and that's 2.26 repeating, so that would be 2.27, so I'm going to write 2.27, and now I'm going to go ahead and do all of these and pause the video. All right, now that I've got all of those, I am going to be able to organize and figure out which one is the fastest and which one is the slowest. So let me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this so that I have some more space to write. And so now I'm going to order them from fastest to slowest. So let's see, my slowest, or my slowest to fastest, my slowest one is going to be number six, and that's 1.4. And then after 1.4, it looks like 1.75. And let me pause this while I finish. Now I have ordered all of the speeds from smallest to biggest. And so I can tell this is my smallest speed value and this is my biggest speed value. So I'm going to be graphing this one and this one. And then I have to find my median value. Gosh, these bells are long, aren't they? Okay. And so I'm going to be crossing off at each end, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And then I get, of course, 
to this spot right here. So one thing that I said that you could do uh, in class the other day was to average those two together and graph them. However, what we need in order to be able to graph these are the numbers over here, the distance number and the time number. Since these are average speeds, there's not going to be a distance and a time if I get this average speed of, of these two added together, divide by two, there's not going to be any trial over here that corresponds to that. So what I've decided instead is I would like for you guys to either pick this one or this one. It doesn't matter which one, but you're just going to use that one as your median. The whole, the idea is I want to have three different speeds graphed on your, your graph, and it doesn't really matter uh, which one of these you choose. I want for sure the slowest and for sure the fastest, and then the median just needs to be either number four or number five. Uh, number five or number six, yeah. So let me go ahead and rearrange this so that I can create a graph. I want my graph to be pretty nice. Um, so I want to, t you know, take my time and make the axes look pretty good. When you turn in your final project, it's fine to have these graphs handwritten instead of on the computer, but they should be handwritten in pen, not pencil, because that is a more professional way to turn something in. That doesn't mean do it in pen and cross a bunch of things out and scratch things out or use a bunch of white out. If you make a mistake, redo it. It should be in pen and there should not be mistakes on it. So do a rough draft. Okay, so uh, down here this would be zero meters, and I want to do I do want to label that this is meters over here, and this is seconds over here. So let's see. I know that for um, these three, I've got my 1.4, which is this one, number six, and that goes seven meters. Uh, I've got my I'm going to choose 2.7, or 2.27, I think. So that's this one here, 10.2 meters. And then my 3.03 .03 was this one, 3.03, .03, and that one's 8 meters. So the greatest number of meters that I need is 10. So let's see if I've got that. Let's say that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then that would be 12. And then for times, I've got the 5.3 seconds, 2.9 seconds, and then 4.5 seconds. So 5.3 is the biggest one that I have. So I only need to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seconds. Okay. Uh, and I do want to label these 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. One, this would be zero seconds, two, three, four, five, six. And please again, this is this is my video and this is more of a rough draft. I want yours to be neat and clean and not as messy as mine. Um, okay, and so now I'm going to actually plot these. So the first one that I need is my 10.2 and 4.5. So let me go up to where 10.2 would be, about right here. And then 4.5 is going to be right in the middle here. So that point will be right about here. And now you're not just plotting the point. I want to see this line. This shows me the slope. If I do rise over run, then if I do rise over one, then I'm going to get the speed. So the slope of this line is giving me the speed, and that's what I'm looking for. Uh, the next one that I want to do is the 8.8 .8 and the 2.9. So 8.8 .8 would be very, very close to where 9 would be. So I'm going to do that. Let's see if 9 would be right in the middle. This would be a little bit lower. 8.8 .8, and then 2.9. Seconds is going to be really close to this three. Okay, 
we can see that that line has to be a lot steeper. And I would use a ruler to make that straighter than what I'm using. And then the last one, 7.6 and 5.3. So 7.6, 7 would be right about here, so 7.6 is a little bit more than halfway. And 5.3, 5.3 is way out here. This would be 5.5, .5. so 5.3 probably more like about here. And then there. And this one was my slowest, and notice that it has the least uh, steepest line. So this is my trial six. This one is trial five. And this one is trial three. So trial three was my steepest, so that's it's the, the fastest speed. Trial five was in the middle, and then trial six was the slowest. And that is what your graph should look like. You do also want to have a title on your graph, uh, distance time. Um, is, is fine. If you do, if what you could do is you could do each of these in different colors. And then you could have a nice little legend over on the side. This is my uh, trial six, and this is trial three, and this is trial five. You could do like that. Uh, you could label them as slowest, uh, fastest, median, like that. Uh, and then a title would be distance versus time. OK. And then I've got my axes labeled. I have them numbered, I have the lines, I have them labeled either here or in a nice little legend with different colors. Uh, anything like that is going to be fine. Um, if you still have questions about how to make your graph, let me know. Let me just show you a picture of one that would look really, really, really good. Okay, so this one shows the title. I have my y-axis labeled and I have the unit. I have my x-axis labeled with the unit. And then I have my axis uh, marked and numbered. This one also marked and numbered. Then I have my lines and I chose to do different colors. And because I'm adorable, I chose to make my fastest one red, the middle one yellow, and the bottom one, the slowest one green. And then I did my nice little color coded uh, key right over here. And so that would be a really nice final product, what I'm looking for. Um, if you do still have any questions, please send me an email or come see me uh, during advisory or before school or after school on Wednesday because you have to have this done and with your presentation ready to go, not presentation, paper, ready to go. Um, this, uh, one thing that you can do is you can take a picture of it and put it into your uh, digital, uh, digital paper. That would be okay. Um, or if you want to turn in your graphs as hard copies separate from the rest of the paper, that's also okay. You should also have your data table uh, listed, and that should be nice and neat, straight lines and uh, rows, and all of the data neatly written also in pen. Please write this in pen. Do not turn in anything that is in pencil. Pencil is not appropriate for a final project. Okay. Thank you.